Under Satya, Microsoft has a new strategy statement. And this is a vision that I believe in. As a father of two young girls, I see a world where my daughters don't have artificial barriers growing up, where they can see a future in technology or science. And with that, I'm very proud to invite to the stage Michelle Dickinson. Michelle is an impossible person with incredible superpowers, and she's recently gone on a secret mission up to Redmond to take apart the Surface Pro 3 and reassemble it. And I think the Surface Pro 3 is a device that's on the brink of disrupting the tablet market. So please welcome Michelle to the stage. Thank you. Oh, you're sheeny, they don't believe it. But you won't You're sheeny, baffles the pink robots. Hey guys, how are you? So I'm Michelle, as it says here, tweet to me at uh, Emmy Dickinson at Twitter, you'll find me as Nano Girl. But this is me, I'm a lover of technology and I'm a breaker of things. And um, it, it's been really interesting. So my job is a nanomechanical failure engineer. That means I break stuff for a career. I tend to break tiny stuff, but I'm not picky. Um, and I do that here in New Zealand. I set up and built New Zealand's um, first and only nanomechanical testing lab. You're very welcome to come and break stuff with me. It's the only one of its type in Australasia. It's pretty cool. I can hear my earrings on this. Hold on. These are 3D printed, by the way. I'm just going to take one out. Um, yeah, uber geek. So this is what I do, and so I'm going to talk to you about breaking things. So what's really interesting is Microsoft came to me and said, hey, Michelle, you do nano stuff. We would love you to talk about nanotech and devices and gadgets and gizmos. Um, and could you do that here at TechEd? I was like, oh, yeah, but here's a condition. Number one, I want to know what your coolest gadget is right now. And number two, I want to borrow it. <laughs> And reluctantly, because people know my reputation, they were like, mm, okay, okay, we're gonna give you this. So they gave me this thing. And you may have seen this before. This is a fancy schmancy Surface Pro 3. Lovely. So I did what I do best. I took it home and I bashed it around with some tools. And um, I wanted to see what was inside. <laughs> so I took this bit off. Uh, I don't think it's that important. This is the... Um, the optically bonded touch screen, that's what it looks like on the other side. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm already in, so we may as well take out some bits and pieces in here. So let's see what we can do. Oh, look, I wonder if this is useful. Um, so this is actually all the electronics just on one board. I'll let you guys see that. Pretty cool. Pretty clever, too, how you can get so much tech just on one board here. And the rest of the space in here is for your four batteries, because it's sort of nine hours battery life. And I have tested that on long-haul flights. So I went beneath the surface because I figured if you want to know how something works, you might as well break it open and take a look. So I decided to go to Redmond and hunt down some people. And I hunted down two pretty awesome people, Pete and Ed, um, Senior um, Director of Product Engineering and um, Chief of Design for the Surface. Pretty much the Surface is their baby. They talked about it like it was their child. And we had an uber nerd out meeting. In which case, we sat down together and we geeked it out on thermal coefficient expansions of different materials and what happens. We drooled over these CNC and five axis point drilling machines that give you the three millimeter chamfer in the rounded corners. Basically, we just geeked it out for a whole day. And what you may see from this initial meeting is that I may have gone in slightly skeptical. Yes, I was taking notes on my iPad and taking pictures with my iPhone at Microsoft. So look, I like all sorts of technology. I'm not biased either way. And I went in with my Apple devices and actually I kind of liked what I saw in the box. And part of that is just hanging out with the people who invent this technology. Because they taught me a few things about what's in there and what's nice to like about it. So I'm going to talk to you about, I guess, a few of the features that I really like from a design standpoint, from an engineer standpoint, and what I learned along the way. Now, I, all, I need you all to sort of do this with me. I understand you are not all martial artists, so we're going to do a little bit of martial arts 101. If you are going to perhaps hit somebody in the face, you have a couple of options, right? You can punch them. That's okay. Old school. You can do this thing called the palm heel strike. It's almost lethal. Genius. Nigel, where are you? <laughs> I love volunteers. <laughs> So basically, if you hold up your palm and you tuck in your fingers like this and you tuck in your thumb, because you don't want to break anything on your side of this, 
you'll see that your palm has actually a beautiful hard... Come on, do it with me. You all know you want to do this. What you have is a really hard surface here that isn't very sensitive for your side, meaning that you can hit things with it pretty hard and it won't hurt you. So what we're going to do is we're going to teach you this palm heel strike. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Nigel. I'm just going to grab you so you don't go anywhere. And what you do with the palm heel strike is it doesn't need much power behind it, and you push underneath the chin of your opponent... And if you're lucky, the head snaps backwards, okay? But don't worry, because I know you're all beginners at this, so we can actually do this a different way. There's always a plan B with the palm heel strike, and that is because us humans have these amazing protrusions on our face called noses. So even if you miss the chin, it's fine, right? Because his nose is still there, so we can miss the chin, slide up his face, and still smash his nose. Thank you, Nigel. Smash his nose in the back of his head. That, my friends, is the palm heel strike. Now, once you know that strike, you need to know how to avoid it. And to avoid it, what you do is what's called the palm block. So the palm block is where you divert that energy away and you push the momentum away from your face and preferably you move your face out of the way. That's the palm block. So when somebody said, hey, the surface thing, it's got like this palm block technology, I was imagining punching people in the face. Apparently it's nothing like that. So Palm Black technology in the Surface Pro is actually a feature that I really started to like. When you have had a stylus or a touch screen before, I don't know if you've been very sensitive with it, but I've always been petrified that if I touch it with any other part of my body, it's going to press on something bad, right? It's going to screw something up. Palm Black technology actually is a software component that recognizes the surface area. So it can tell the difference to whether I'm touching it with a stylus, whether I'm touching it with my finger, whether I'm touching it with my palm. And so with palm block, I can rest my whole palm on the screen and it doesn't affect it. And I can still, this is really clever, I can still use my finger, even though the rest of my palm is touching it, and it doesn't interfere with it. So that means I can write just like I have a pen and paper and lean my wrist on the screen. And those of you who've had styluses before know what it's like, right? Because you dare not touch anything, so you start writing at this funny angle. Well, I don't know about you, but I drop stuff all the time, okay? I, don't, I can't tell you how many things I've smashed. Really good at dropping stuff. Dropping people is good in martial arts. If you throw them off balance, use their momentum against them, you end up on top. That's always a winner. However, you're going to drop your device. You, you do this panic face, right, where you're actually not sure what will happen. So I was like, all right, let's do this. And what you see is because it's made from magnesium, we've done this with a high-speed camera, and you've got the flexibility of the Gorilla Glass, it bounces. Yes. Better than bouncing, it leaves a dent in the table. And I think that's awesome because you know I've been here when there's dents in the table. So dropping things is pretty good too. And finally, just having a little bit of a chill out. So it gets pretty hot in here, and we have laptop capabilities in a tablet size form. How on earth did they manage to do that? Well, if we crack it open, what we'll see is they have this pretty unique fan. It's this thin, it's teeny, custom designed. But better than this are these, what I call the worms. They're not really worms. They look like little thin worms. Inside these copper pipes is water. There's freaking water inside of here. Totally nuts. So water cooling pipes. And what happens is inside this is the hole. It has a little bit of wicking fabric. This is hot, so water turns to vapor. Vapor transfers along here, cools down, turns into liquid, liquid flows back. Genius in a device this thin. So you can come and look at these later, but they're like little flat worms, and inside is a whole bunch of cooling technology. And the fins are polymer and copper, and they're really quiet, so when I have it on, you won't be able to hear it. Pretty cool to have a fan in a tablet equivalent device with laptop capabilities, and so that is how the system cools down. And with that, hopefully you've enjoyed coming on my little journey of butt kicking, lots of kicking, palm healing, surviving Nigel trip beneath the surface. Thank you.